Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at the Voyo V3 Ultrabook. This is a very low-cost two-in-one from a Chinese company called Voyo, and you can see it does all of the uh, standard two-in-one uh, functions here, so you can put it in display mode, you can have it in tent mode, although it sometimes slips a little bit on a desk when you're using it. Uh, you can run it in tablet mode, and of course, uh, have it operate as just a standard laptop. And the price on this isn't too bad, actually. It's about $227 right now on GearBest.com, and I should mention in the interest of full disclosure, that GearBest sent this to the channel free of charge for this review. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. And as you'll see, uh, you will get what you pay for with this, some, in some ways good and in many ways bad. So let's take a look at uh, how all of this is put together. Now on the surface, uh, this actually looks like a really nice piece of hardware. It's got a nice orange shell on this particular version. I think they have a gray version available too. It uh, feels really nice, a nice grip to it. It's rubberized, so it's got, uh, doesn't feel all that slippery and uh, very heavy too. It's got a pretty big battery inside, so it has that nice feel when you first take it out of the box. But then when you start playing around with it, you'll start to notice some uh, imperfections that you will encounter along the way. But uh, it does have some decent specifications though, and it's got a uh, quad-core Atom X5 Z8300 processor built in, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. It has a 13.3 inch IPS 1080p display, uh, which doesn't look too bad. The viewing angles are decent on it. Uh, you will run into a few viewing angle issues just in the sense that uh, the display has a bit of an air gap to it. So it is a touch screen, of course, because it does work in that tablet mode. Uh, and they are, because of the cost here, they're not putting the display up against the glass like you'll see on more expensive laptops. So I think that does cut down on the viewing angle slightly in that the uh, display might run slightly under the bezel depending on which angle you're looking at it from. You can often see if you peer inside of it, uh, you can see some of the uh, connecting guts there of the display. So you'll see some areas where it doesn't look all that uh, premium, but again, you're paying $227 for this, so there are some uh, sacrifices to be made with that. Inside, it has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, which is actually a pretty big battery for a laptop like this running with an Atom processor, but it only gets you about eight hours of battery life, which has been surprising because um, you would think a battery this large with something this power efficient should do better, but it doesn't. I think this display being an inexpensive display is probably drawing more power, uh, hence the need for a larger battery. So you're only going to get about a workday out of it. Uh, you won't get as much as you should with uh, a chipset and a battery of this size. So uh, bear that in mind. 3.3 pounds or one and a half kilograms, so it does have a bit of bulk to it. Uh, my biggest complaint with the hardware is the fact that it, it, the keyboard and trackpad are pretty lousy. And what's so funny is it's going to look great on video, but um, the biggest issue I'm seeing here is that it's got that Apple look to it where the keys poke up from the case of the, uh, the computer, but uh, as you get towards the center of the keyboard, the keys actually go flush to the casing, whereas uh, they have some travel outside of it. So there is still travel on all of these keys, but uh, you can't really see it on camera. It's hard to really show you, but the G key is almost flush to the plastic casing it's around. So it's very hard to get a good feel for the keys because some keys stick up higher than others do. And that is just an example of kind of the lack of quality control that they've applied to uh, putting this together. The trackpad also is uh, very weird. It just doesn't feel all that uh, expensive or premium, again, because we're dealing with a $200 computer. Uh, but even some things like holding down the mouse button and trying to drag doesn't work. You have to click and then drag with another finger. So little things that I'm noticing here or there. I'm often uh, hitting the uh, left-hand side of the trackpad, and it's, it's, this has a very large zone for gestures and stuff, so I need to turn all these things off. So wasn't too crazy about the keyboard or trackpad. Oddly, they put the caps lock and numlock stuff down here in the bottom with no labels on it either, so it's hard to figure out what is uh, what on there. On the side, you've got a bunch of ports. You have a USB 2.0 port over here. Uh, there's a headphone microphone jack here, and this actually is the same exact size as the power cord. Uh, so I was plugging the power cord in here by accident initially. Thankfully, nothing got zapped, but uh, just make sure you know that the power cord goes on the other side of the device. Uh, over here is a SIM card slot. Now, this particular version does not have a 4G radio, but they do have one that does, which I think costs another $80 or so. For, so for about $300, you can get the same computer with a, a 4G radio built in. I believe here in the United States, it will work with T-Mobile and AT&T, but not Verizon and Sprint. Uh, volume rocker up and down here, your uh, power switch is there, and then there's a manual keyboard lock, so you can flick this and turn off the trackpad and uh, keyboard. It will disable itself automatically when you flip it around into that tablet mode, but if for some reason you want to disable the keyboard and trackpad while it's in a different mode, uh, flick that switch and you can manually uh, disconnect those two devices. 
On the other side, we've got a, uh, a SD card slot, a micro SD card slot, so you can augment its storage. It will go up to 128 gigabytes of uh, external storage with one of those SSDs. Again, you got 64 gigabytes built in. HDMI out here, USB 3.0 on this side, and of course that power adapter that we talked about. The hinge feels okay. It's actually got a nice mechanism to it, but it is a little weak as you saw, so sometimes it will uh, kind of collapse in on itself in tent mode, uh, but it isn't bad, especially given the price. It does seem to hold itself together. It does bounce a little bit, uh, but you can get the screen uh, finally adjusted into the position that you want it to go in. Now, I do want to give you a warning about how they implemented Windows on this device. This is shipping with a legitimate copy of Windows, but it is a Chinese version of Windows, and what they've done to make it easier for those of us who don't speak Chinese is they already built in an administrator account uh, with no password. So if I tap sign in here, uh, it's going to bring us right into uh, Windows as an administrator with no password at all. And the reason why they did this is that the Chinese version of Windows defaults to Chinese and you have to change it to English after you create an account on the system. So they've done that for you at the factory, but I don't like the fact that this thing is coming in already configured with an administrator account that I haven't had control over. I'm even seeing remnants of files that they have uh, apparently accessed on the computer while it was in the factory or maybe this image of the operating system that they flashed to this and every computer uh, had stuff on there. But there's evidence that uh, somewhere along the way they had accessed files on this device before they shipped it to customers. Not good, not good at all. And I would suggest very strongly uh, that you install Windows from scratch when you get this because uh, who knows what they did with it at the factory. It may not be anything malicious, but sometimes even uh, people don't, don't know that they did something malicious perhaps and uh, there's a security issue there. So be very, very careful with that. Uh, big issue and again, something I've seen a lot of times on a lot of these Chinese computers. All right, let's take a look now at its web browsing performance and we'll see how quickly it can render things on a page. So we'll maybe hit up our uh, usual uh, test here of the New York Times and see how fast things come to life. This has an Atom uh, processor on board, so it's not going to be the fastest thing you'll see out there, but it's certainly adequate quit for uh, getting things browsed on the web. Uh, as usual, the ads tend to bog things down more than the content does, but uh, this will give you a feel as to how all of that comes together. So once the ads come up, uh, it is pretty responsive and about where I've seen other devices that are running with this same processor perform. So not too bad on the web browsing side of things. Having four gigs of RAM will help also, especially if you have multiple tabs open. So if you're looking at uh, a cheap computer like this with four gigs of RAM versus one with two, uh, this will do a little better because it can have more uh, kind of uh, queued up in the background perhaps then uh, some of those other machines uh, are able to accommodate there. So not too bad on uh, being able to browse the web with this device. Again, about where I would expect it to be given its price tag and the ads tend to bog things down more often than not. Uh, web video seems to work just fine. So we've got a, a 1080p video here from YouTube that I uh, queued up earlier. That seems to be working nicely. I'll skip ahead here and just show you how fast it queues back up again. Uh, so this is fine. It's certainly watchable. Uh, as always, it's a little better on Edge than it is on Chrome on these low-end devices at the moment. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. Uh, 1080p 60 video here has been working fine as well, so uh, no issues with that. And again, this is in line with what I've seen on other uh, similarly equipped hardware. So decent web browsing performance. And on the Octane Benchmark score, which puts a number to that performance, we get a score of 6,458, uh, which puts it in the lower end of the spectrum for devices like this, but it's very close to uh, the Asus E200H, which is a $200 laptop that we looked at uh, with the same processor from a major brand. Uh, good enough, I think, for basic web browsing and the kinds of things you would do with a computer at this price point. Now, when you're browsing the web, just know that it does not have wireless AC built in. It's just wireless N at 2.4 gigahertz. Again, another cost-cutting measure to get uh, everything into the price tag that they were able to get there. I do want to show you some Microsoft Word real quick, too. You can see how our newsletter template looks on this one. This is kind of like the worst-case scenario for a Microsoft Word document, a lot of images and text and everything, and uh, seems to be working just fine, so you can uh, very quickly re-render things on the page here and you can see it is pretty responsive actually and about where I've seen other uh, Atom uh, Cherry Trail devices perform so it should be great for schoolwork and other things that uh, you would do uh, with spreadsheets and word processing documents and that kind of thing. Now they pack an active stylus in with this as well no additional charge it's part of the package it does need to be charged in order to use you only get about four or five hours on a charge with it but it does actually work somewhat decently in fact it has a pretty usable wrist detection also so you can see here as I uh, rest my uh, wrist on the 
the screen, I'm not getting any other input. In fact, if I have the pen resting on here, it'll ignore my finger completely, which is a great thing to see. That's the difference between an active stylus and a not active one. It's able to uh, uh, shoot some data back to the computer to let it know what it's doing. So that was a pretty nice feature. There's also some pressure detection on it too. So you can see as I push down harder, I'm getting that box coming up there. So if you have an app that uh, allows you to apply pressure to something, you will see that happen. But it seems to be pretty good. Very uh, fast response on it too. Uh, not bad and kind of a surprise to see this packed in at this price point. But enough work, let's get into some gaming. We'll start with Minecraft. All right, so Minecraft is running okay on this, about 20 to 30 frames per second, sometimes dipping below that mark, as you can see as we're moving through the world here. So not bad. This is the Java-based version of Minecraft, the one that uh, most people run. Uh, the Windows 10 version will probably perform slightly better, but uh, I like to look at this one, just given this is what most people are looking for out there. So it's, it's playable, but it's not going to be uh, nearly as smooth as it might be on other laptops. And I've seen other devices running with this very same processor do better, and those have mostly been desktop-based devices. So I think they're they're uh, able to do a little more because they have more power available and uh, they're easier to cool. This is a fanless laptop, so oftentimes they're uh, dialing things down slightly to keep it from overheating, and this might be an example of that happening there. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we get a score of 1,448, which is uh, not great actually, especially when you compare it up with the Asus, which does uh, slightly better. So I think there's something going on here that's hindering its graphics performance. As a result, I'm not going to recommend this as a gaming device by any stretch. Uh, it barely handles Minecraft. It's certainly not going to do well with Counter-Strike Go or uh, any other AAA game you might be thinking about running on it. It's really, I think, going to be relegated to casual uh, tablet games like Fruit Ninja and that sort of thing uh, and doing some basic work tasks. But it is a decent multimedia playback device. We're going to take a look now at Kodi and see how it does with some higher-end video formats. All right, now that we have Kodi loaded up, we'll take a look at an HEVC file. This is a 4K file, which is highly compressed, very difficult sometimes on uh, lots of these low-end computers, but this one seems to be doing very well with it. So uh, these Intel chips are really well tuned for all these modern video formats. So as you can see there, uh, that one's running just fine. We'll load up the Force Awakens. This is a Blu-ray MKV. I'll skip a little bit ahead in the video here and just see how uh, everything is working. So uh, all the high-end video formats should do just fine on this, partly because the Cherry Trail, Trail chipset uh, is so good. The audio quality, though, isn't so great out of this. There are two speakers on the bottom of the device tinny, kind of what you would expect at the price point. Uh, so I would suggest plugging in a pair of headphones or uh, connecting one of those USB DACs and getting a much better quality audio output from it, but uh, certainly passable for movie watching and other things that you would do on a device like this. So that is the Voyo V3 Ultrabook, and I'm gonna label this one buy at your own risk because on the surface, it feels like a pretty good deal that you're getting a uh, somewhat decent two-in-one here with a uh, passable 1080p IPS display for uh, well under $300, but there are some issues. The first, of course, is that you've got the security problem of no password on its built-in administrator account, along with a Windows installation that who knows what happened to it before it was uh, put on here. So there's maybe some maintenance to do when you first get it to uh, get a fresh copy of Windows installed. There's some quality control issues with the keyboard. The trackpad isn't so great. Uh, the last thing is customer support, and I don't think you should expect to get any from Voyo. Uh, you might get some from GearBest, but I think this is going to be one of these devices where if it breaks, you're going to be on your own. It might last for two or three years, it may last for six months, but uh, no matter what lifespan you get out of it, I don't think you'll ever hear from Voyo uh, post-purchase. I've uh, contacted them in the past with some questions on a prior product that I bought from them. I have never heard back from them. I even emailed them a couple days ago just to see if maybe things have improved since my last attempt. Uh, nothing at all. So I think, again, this is going to be one of those things where it's a great deal if it works, but if it doesn't work, you're never going to see much support for it uh, in the future. So uh, bear that in mind. It is what you pay for it, and buyer beware. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.